So after COVID, due to some very bad lifestyle choices and habits, I ended up with this physique. Now that meant I had to undergo a body recomposition, so basically losing fat while building muscle at the same time, and that basically ended up with me getting to this physique. So I basically built and retained muscle during my weight loss phase. So I want to give you the main points that actually drove that process forward so you can implement it and ignore the stuff that doesn't actually work. So I'll go over six things, and each of those points are going to have a why, so why I think you should implement them, and I'll give you a how as well, so how you can practically apply it into your life. This is the stuff that's worked for me and for the clients that I've trained as well, so let's go. Now the first thing is not to do a massive calorie deficit. Usually when we talk about losing fat, everyone wants results quick, right? They want it fast, 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 fast. But the problem with that is doing an excessive calorie deficit basically means you have a higher chance of losing weight from your muscle as well, which we want to avoid. If you have a slower calorie deficit, for example, around 500 calories, and you do it for a longer period of time, you can slowly chip away at the fat while retaining as much muscle as possible. Now, if you're not sure how to calculate your calories for this, I'll show you right now. Cool. First thing you want to do is go on caloriecalculator.net on Google. And you want to click that first link on the top. I'm going to switch to metric units, put my age and details in. So 165, exercise 45 times a week. Make sure our results are in calories and Mifflin saying J E O R. And then after that, press calculate. Now, you've got these four options here. What I would recommend doing is going for that weight loss in the middle. So around 0.5 kilograms per week or mild weight loss depending on what what you're on so if you're on a higher body fat so if you're a bit more on the fat side then what i would recommend is doing a just normal weight loss and if you're leaner already then you might just do a mild weight loss so you don't lose too much muscle at the same time and i would avoid the extreme weight loss unless you're extremely extremely obese point number two is actually to lift as heavy as possible so normally when everyone talks about weight loss they always talk about the cardio but i actually want you to focus on resistance training i want you to focus on the gym because when you're lifting you're recruiting more muscle fibers and when you do that you force them to stay if you don't use it you lose it so lifting those heavy weights help you helps you preserve that muscle mass so when you're lifting heavy your body recognizes oh shit he's still gonna need this muscle mass because every week he's pushing his body to lift the weight so it has more chance of staying. How do you actually implement this? I want you to go to your routines and start with your compound lifts. Because you're on a caloric deficit, you might be a little bit more tired than usual. It shouldn't be the case if you've got a good deficit and a good coach, but still, you wanna start with your compound lifts where you've got the most energy and you wanna focus on lifting as heavy as you can on that, closer to failure, because you really wanna push those muscles and make sure that it doesn't atrophy and get smaller. Point number three is to have a higher macro split of protein especially during your weight loss phase so because we're in that weight loss phase there's a risk that the weight that you lose can come from muscle now the best way to counter that is to have more protein because that contains amino acids which are basically the building blocks of muscle so make sure your protein split is higher so what i would recommend is having 1.6 2.2 grams per kilogram of your body weight if you weigh for example 60 kilograms you can find that in the range for example two and I can do 60 times 2 and that gives me 120 grams. So I'd aim for that much protein per day. Now the easiest way to do this is by systemizing it. So have, for example, three meals a day. This is the easiest way. And make sure in each of those meals you divide that 120 by 3. So you're having 40, 40, 40. This allows it to become more automatic and less effort. And because protein is the most important macro when you're cutting, make sure that this is always ticked off no matter what. A couple of other things you can do is force yourself to eat the protein by making sure you buy a varied amount of protein sauce throughout the week when you go for your shop. And this way, you've already committed to it, you've invested in it, so you're much more likely to eat that food as well. Now, the next point is actually to monitor your progress. This is actually to see if you're making changes and progress based off of data and not your assumptions. A very big mistake is assuming that we're doing better than we actually are when in reality we're not actually making progress as much as we should. But you don't know because you're not tracking anything. The best thing I did was when I was going through my weight loss recomposition phase, I was taking regular photos so I could see the visible changes in my physique. I could see how my body composition was changing. And that was also measured with my weights I was lifting in the gym. I didn't look too much at my body weight because it didn't really matter to me. As long as I was feeling good and I was strong and my body looked a certain way, the number on the scale doesn't really matter too much to me. If in three weeks you start to see that you're losing too much muscle, maybe you can up the calories a little bit or you see that you're not losing enough fat, then you can drop the calories a little bit or maybe add in a day of cardio, walk some extra steps. But the whole point being is you can't make any adjustments if you don't know what your position at the moment is the next one is very very important is actually to manage stress so when you're stressed your body releases a hormone called cortisol 
and if you have elevated levels of cortisol it can cause muscle breakdown which you want to avoid at all costs so what you want to do is practice ways to deal with stress such as mindfulness meditation journaling and then another problem with stress is obviously when it's elevated you need to bring that back to back to normal and this is where a lot of addictive habits come in for example binge eating smoking taking drugs all these things like video games and wasting time are always done to help you combat the stress because you don't have a healthier way of dealing with it so if you find yourself going to the snack cupboard after a long day of work or you sit there playing video games for six seven hours a day when you should be working on your business the problem is that you don't know how to deal with your stress that's a very very high likelihood that that's what the problem is so you want to find ways you can deal with it for me personally i like journaling so i've got this notion page which i've been doing for about two years now maybe three whenever there's something major that happens in my life i'll learn a lesson i type it out and i really get my thoughts out of my head onto that page and daily as well i've got this little notepad like journal that i do so i write a couple of sentences out there because the more you store things in your head the worse it becomes you have to put it out there you have to see it in person really find ways to deal with that stress go for a walk exercise and the next point which is very important is to include healthy fats and carbs see the common thing everyone talks about is this new fat diet of carnivore or keto or this or that i'm going to cut out fats i'm going to come out cut out carbs and all that I think it's a lot of bullshit to be honest with you because there's always going to be a new fad diet to get people hyped up to buy new programs or whatever. That's just the way the world works. If people want new things but new doesn't necessarily mean that it works. Healthy fats are essential for hormone production and especially hormones that help regulate muscle mass and strength. For example, testosterone which is a hormone that promotes muscle protein synthesis and reduces the chance of muscle protein breakdown. Got another one, growth hormone, which stimulates muscle growth. Got another one called IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor 1. And it works in conjunction with the growth hormone to repair muscle and help it grow. We've got another one, for example, insulin, which you may have heard of before, which helps cells take up glucose and amino acids, promoting protein synthesis and reducing the chance of protein breakdown. So all these hormones are so vital. And the problem is when you're cutting out those healthy fats, it's very hard for your body to produce those hormones. So make sure you're including healthy fats into a diet. Examples of that can be olive oil, avocado, nuts, things that are very natural that are you know found in the ground type thing. And another very good one is fatty fish as well, for example, tuna, prawns, shrimp, anything that you can find that's natural like that will be very, very good. Not only your muscle building, but even your heart as well. And with the carbs during this fat loss phase, like I mentioned, we're gonna be in a deficit. You wanna be timing your carbs around your workout. So you get that spike of sugar, which is gonna give you the energy to train and especially have them post-workout as well to enhance your muscle recovery and manage your cortisol levels as well.